In this short instructional video, I'm going to show you how to measure distance using your compass and how to use pacing and timing to plot your progress across the mountain. We measure distance as a navigational aid so that we know how far that we're traveling. To measure distance, you can use the millimeter scale on your compass. The millimeter scale can always be used no matter what scale map you use. Just remember to adjust what each millimeter represents. A millimetre on a 1 to 50,000 map would represent 50 metres and a millimetre on a 1 to 25,000 map would represent 25 metres. In this example we're going to take a 1 to 50,000 map and measure the distance from spot height 396 to the forest corner. So we take the compass and we place the zero up against the 396 and measure how many millimetres across to the forest corner. In this example there are 8 millimetres, so 8 by 50 would be 400 metres. On the map the boxes are 1 kilometre by 1 kilometre and approximately 1.5 kilometres on the diagonal as shown. The other way to measure is to use a Roma. There are three scales on this compass. 1 to 40, 1 to 50 and 1 to 25,000. It's important to select the correct Roma to match the scale of map that you're using. In this example, we're going to use the Roma to measure between 0.599 and 0.619. You take your compass, pick the 1 to 50,000 Roma, which is the middle of the three shown. In this example, it's 600 metres. There are two ways to plot your progress around the mountains. One of them is pacing. Pacing requires you to count the number of strides you take over a given distance. Pick two features on the map that are 100 metres apart and then use these features to count your number of paces. To pace, walk normally and count every time your right foot hits the ground. At the end of 100 metres, note the number of double paces that you've taken. Repeat this and take an average. This will give you a number of paces for flat ground. You can now use this number to tick off 100 metre sections as you travel across the hills. The terrain or the gradient will lengthen or shorten your stride, so it's important to make a pacing card to show these differences. Using the earlier example, you can break this section into four sets of 100 metres. Tick off each 100 metre section using a bead on a string or by picking up a stone. That way if you lose count you'll know how many hundreds you've already done. The second way to plot your progress is to use timing. In 1892, William Naismith came up with Naismith's rule. This was based on the average speed of an average group, and he found that to be 5 km an hour, with 1 minute per 10 meter contour climbed to be added. You can see from this timing card the time it should take to cover various distances. Different speeds are also shown. Another way to plot your progress in the mountains is to time yourself. To do this you need to measure the distance you're going to cover and count the number of contours you're going to climb. In our example we've got 1 km 650 meters so the total for time would be 19 minutes and 48 seconds. We had 5 contours which will equal 5 minutes and then we add the two together as shown to get 24 minutes 48 seconds. To recap, we measure distance so that we have a tangible idea of how far we're travelling. We can use pacing to measure the distance travelled on the ground. We count each double pace and make corrections for the terrain and the gradient. We can also use timing to record our progress. Speed can then be adjusted according to the ground and the terrain you're on. It should be noted that timing and pacing are only guides and that they complement good land interpretation and map reading skills. But with practice, they can become very accurate and used with confidence.